So as you probably guessed, this is another Uber video. And I thought I would sit down and I would talk to some of the other Uber drivers that are out there um, who are delivering for Uber Eats specifically, who may be wondering why it is that you're seeing all these people online who are making buku dollars and you don't seem to be doing the same. So let's have a conversation about that. Okay, so the first thing I would ask is, where are you delivering? Now, if you're in some place like a big city, like if you're um, if you're in California, especially around Los Angeles or Sacramento or something like that, you might be getting a heck of a lot more orders than, say, somebody who's in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, the reason being that you've got a larger density of people. You've got a larger density of traffic. You've got a lot more selections as far as restaurants and places to go. And you've also got a lot more people who are going to find the value in spending a little bit of extra money to have somebody else deal with all the traffic and all the crap inside the restaurant to bring them their food. Okay, so if you're in a smaller town, you're definitely going to get orders because I'm in a small town and I definitely get orders but I'm not going to get the same quantity of orders that, uh, that somebody in maybe New York City or uh, Miami or San Francisco. I'm not going to get the same quantity of orders that they're getting. In the area that you live in, what's the age demographic? Believe it or not, you will get orders from older people once in a blue moon. But the largest demographic of people who are going to order food and be willing to spend the five dollars or so extra to have the food delivered is going to be younger people. Older people tend to cook more often and younger people tend to eat out more often. So if you are in an area that is a higher density of people over say the age of 40, okay, you are probably not going to get the same quantity of orders as you would in an area that is very heavy with millennials. The area that you live in, does it have a business district? Okay, like the area that I live in, there is, we have a, we have an area where it's mostly a lot of tech companies, pharmaceutical companies, things like that. And they all sort of congregate in one particular area. Now, if you do have a district like that, where there's a lot of businesses or a lot of industry or something like that, the next question to ask is, are there a lot of restaurants right in and around that area? If there are, people are going to be less likely to spend the extra money to have food delivered in if there is a large selection of places to eat within walking distance of where they work. Another question is going to be, what kind of cuisine is available in your area? If you live in an area that has a lot of fast food but not much else, you're probably going to get delivery requests, especially from places like McDonald's, but they aren't going to be high value requests, okay? Um... Thankfully, the area that I live in, there actually is a varied array of food that you can order, but we do have a lot of Indian restaurants. And <clears throat> the problem with that is going to be the same kind of problem that you would have if the only thing in your area available really is McDonald's, okay? Um, people are going to tend to order from the place that's closest to their house. Unless they have a real affinity for a specific Indian restaurant, they're probably just going to go ahead and order from the closest one to their house, same as they do with McDonald's. If you have a person who lives on block A, they're not going to order from McDonald's on block Z if there's one on block C. Okay, so you figure you're going to end up getting, for those deliveries, you're going to end up getting between 3 and $5 for most of those deliveries. And you have to decide if that's actually worth your time or not. Um, and you have to look at your own area for that. Take a look, drive around your area, find out how many restaurants there are. I mean, you don't have to have an exact count, but get, a, get an idea of how many restaurants there are and how varied the cuisine is. Okay, this was going to sound really, really silly, but this is something that I have learned over time delivering on my own. What is the housing situation in your area? Is it mostly apartments? Is it mostly housing developments? Or is it mostly people who are private landowners? If you live in an area that has a lot of private landowners, especially if there is a decent distance between neighbors, you're going to get less order requests. And I know that that sounds really, really strange, but I have found that about 98% of my deliveries go to either apartment complexes or housing developments. 
with apartment complexes, you've got people who may be new to the area or are somewhat transient, which means that they don't really know the roads real well. They don't know what's here. They don't know where to go to get food. And they don't really know how to travel around the area. So they are more likely to order food from somebody who lives in the area than they are to actually go out and try to find places on their own. So you're going to do really good with apartment people because you know where the restaurants are and they don't. Okay, so they're going to they're going to be willing to pay a little bit extra to have you go and get it for them because you won't get lost. When it comes to housing developments, <laughs> these are the people who are trying to keep up with the Joneses. Okay? They want their neighbors to see that they're having food delivered by an app delivery service, whether it's Uber Eats or Grubhub or Postmates or whatever the case may be, they want their neighbors to see that they're having these deliveries made because what that does is it tells the neighbors that they are well off enough that not only can they afford to have somebody else cook their food for them, they can afford to have it delivered and they can do better than just ordering pizza every night. Now, if you have people who are landowners nine times out of ten, they don't really have anything to prove to anybody in their neighborhood, and they also already know the roads themselves. They are more likely to either cook or get in their car and go get the food themselves. Now, the other thing to ask yourself is how well are the restaurants handling the service? As you know, when you go in to pick up a meal, the restaurants are supposed to have the meal ready for you when you come in, but that doesn't always happen. So if you are consistently waiting 10, 15 minutes at a restaurant for them to get the meal together and give it to you to deliver, that's actually cutting down on the amount of deliveries that you can make in a day because the longer you stand in a restaurant, the less pings you can accept from other places. So take a good look at the area that you're in, and I'm not saying that there's really anything that you can do about it because there's not. Um, but that is going to affect your bottom line, okay, where you could normally do maybe 10 deliveries in a day. If 10 of those deliveries, out of those 10 deliveries, if five of them are taking 15 minutes, you might end up only getting 10 instead of maybe getting 15 that day, and that obviously is going to impact your bottom line. Are you going out at the right times of day and on the right days? Now, this is one of those things that's going to take a little bit of time to figure out. Um, I have figured out that in my area, lunchtime from Tuesday through Saturday is the best time to go out. Uh, Mondays are really bad days, holidays are really bad days, and Sundays are touch and go. Now, when the weather is bad, obviously more people are going to call to have delivery because they don't want to travel in the rain or the snow. I ain't traveling in the snow either, so not in this area. They don't, they don't treat the roads well enough down here, so I ain't going out in the snow, but I'll go out in the rain. But you're going to have to spend some time and figure out what days are the worst days to go out on and what times of the day are the worst times to go out. Now, in my area, I know that there are Uber drivers that go out to deal with the dinner traffic, which I have chosen not to do. And the reason I chose not to do that is because the traffic in this area is absolutely insane. I have gone out to deliver dinners at night, and I've had people order from a restaurant on one side of the real heavy traffic and then they live on the other side and then they get angry at me because I got stuck in rush hour traffic trying to get to them and it took way too, way too long. Now I do put the food in a hot bag but if I'm stuck in traffic for an hour the hot bag's not going to keep the food as warm as it should have been when it got to your door. So a trip that would have taken me normally 10 minutes is taking me an hour because I'm getting stuck in traffic. Now, part of the problem here is the layout of the town, okay? We've got a lot of development going on in this area, and it's just more and more and more, and we've got kind of a big city on top of a small country town infrastructure. So we've got all this traffic that's dumping out onto two-lane roads, and traffic gets locked down for about two or three hours. So those two or three hours, it's actually not worth it to me to go out and make a delivery because it could take me that long to get one delivery done. So now at the end of that delivery, I'm pissed off, I'm frustrated, and I am stressed out. And my customer is really upset because they got a cold waffle. I'm still dwelling on the guy with the cold waffle. <laughs> it's been weeks and I still feel really bad about that. And last but not least for this video, do the people in your area tip? Now I see, I go online, I'm part of the forums, I'm part of groups, I watch videos, I do the whole nine yards, and I'm seeing people coming back with, oh, this guy gave me a $10 tip, and this guy gave me a $15 tip, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking and I'm going, what? Because my area, they don't tip. People do not tip in North Carolina. 
And I'm not bitter about it because I get it. You know, people are, you know, either not raised to tip or they think the tipping is wrong or again they're going online and they're watching all the videos too and they think we're making a zillion dollars for our deliveries <laughs> and here i am making a delivery that netted me three dollars for a 20 minute trip and i'm not getting a tip out of it because the person i'm delivering to thinks that i'm getting all the money that was paid extra or something i don't know i hate to say this but my largest tip actually came yesterday and it was five dollars uh, I had a gentleman who ordered a order from McDonald's, believe it or not. McDonald's orders usually don't tip. But um, this guy ordered some food from McDonald's. I got it to him, and he paid me a $5 tip, which was actually more than what I got for the delivery from Uber Eats. So that was a little bit mind-blowing. But I've also had things where um, yesterday, again, I had a tip came in from a previous week. So it's been, it was from a delivery that was actually eight days ago, okay? And they sent me a dollar tip. I'll try not to spend it all in one place, what can I tell you? But that seems to be pretty typical. Um, the average tip that I get here is $2, okay? Every once in a while, somebody will go crazy and give me a $4 tip or a $5 tip like they did yesterday. I would say probably about 97% of my deliveries are tipless. So I do not expect a tip. Um, I'm very surprised when I do get a tip, but you need to understand that a lot of places people do tip, so that is affecting the bottom line, and you're hearing from people who are making, you know, five, six hundred dollars a week, and a good portion of that is tips, which you may or may not be getting. Again, there's not much that you can do about it, but when you're questioning why these people are doing so well and you're not, that is one of the things that you can figure into it. Anyway, thanks for watching this, guys. I hope that it helped you out a little bit. Um, don't get discouraged. If nothing else, as I always say, I'm not making a whole lot of money on Uber. And I can even show you, this is what I've done. This is Easter Sunday. And I started working, I think I went out Monday. No, I started going out Tuesday. And I went out every single day except for Friday. Okay? And that's where I'm at. Okay, so I'm not making a whole buttload of money either. But don't get discouraged. If worse comes to worse, as I keep saying to myself, something is better than nothing. Because prior to doing this, my income was at zero. So at least I've got something coming in. Um, I've still got some debt that I'm trying to pay down. So this is actually helping me get some of my debt down. I don't have astronomical debt. But I do have some and I'd like to get it worked down before it turns into astronomical debt. And it is helping. Something is better than nothing. Um, when I am on my downtime, I, time, I turn my car off so I'm not burning fuel. And I'm learning how to I'm learning how to maximize what I'm making doing this. And that's pretty much what you gotta do. It's gonna suck the first two or three weeks because you're still trying to figure out how to do all of that. The best ways to get places, how to burn as little fuel as possible, how to maximize your fuel economy. Trust me, you will get there. Okay. Um, it actually doesn't take all that long. I haven't been doing this very long. So don't get frustrated, don't lose your way, and don't lose hope keep doing it. At least it's something to do, and it is something. Because as far as I figure, I made $135 a week, but this week, but I'm $135 richer than I was last week, so that's always a good thing. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Happy Easter.